This tutorial is for version 4.0, but you can quite easily adapt it for the scene tree tween in version 3.5. Tweens are used to smoothly transition numerical values. Tween is kind of like a lightweight version of the animation player node. It's less powerful, but much more convenient if you don't need that power. If animation player seems overkill for a job, replacing it with a tween might be the solution. So, let's learn them. Let's use this simple scene as an example. First things first, tweens are not nodes. Tweens are ref counted objects that work in code. You must create them, and then assign tasks to them. The tasks are called tweeners. Since tweens are ref counted, when they finish their tasks, they are deleted automatically. To create a tween, you must assign create tween to a variable. Now for the interesting part, assigning tasks to this tween. The property tweener that I'm writing now is the most common. It needs an object, its property, the value you want to transition to, and the duration of this transition. Let's also tween our sprite scale to make it bigger. Let's also do something after this, like changing the text of our label, and run the project. Let's slow this down. Notice that Godot first moves a bit, to y equals 120, and it waits for this motion to end before growing. Notice also that the text immediately becomes Big Gardo, even though the line that does this is last. These lines only assign tasks in order, but they don't wait for them. The code after them happens immediately, but when tweens finish all tasks, they emit a finished signal you can await. Instead of awaiting, you can assign function calls as tween tasks themselves via a callback tweener. However, you can't just surround a line of code, you need to provide a callable type. In this case, we need to use set, binding to it the text, property, as well the value we assign to this property. Since this callback is now a tweener, and the tween starts new tasks when it finishes old ones, the text changes last. Another type of task is the interval tweener. It tells the tween to rest for some time. Let's go back to property tweeners. I like to separate the what and the how, since lines with them tend to get quite long. Also, the API is full with the word tween, so I like to name my tweens TW. All tweeners, but especially property tweeners, can be modified in a number of ways by appending more methods to them. You can for example make the transition smoother with set trans and set ease. You can also set a default transition type and ease into a tween, even as soon as it's created. If you have a lot of the same type of transition, you can do this and omit it in the individual tweeners, which helps with line length. Here is how all of the transition types look. The type of easing I used for these is, ease out. And here is how all of the easing types look. The type of transition I used for these is, cubic. Let's check out the scene I made for this animation. In its script, I use a few more things I have not talked about. First, I use a method called set loops on creation. This makes the tween redo all of its tasks infinitely, or multiple times if a number is provided. I also use two methods called from and from current. From can tell the tween what value to start from. From current makes it so the moment its line runs, it saves the value of the property, and then it basically acts the same as, from, using that value. Here's how it works in this scene. I will clean up the scene a little now to focus on one more important method, as relative. 
This method makes it so the final value is considered as a relative change instead. You can append as many valid methods to a tweener as you like. Order doesn't matter. But how did I use one tween to do multiple tasks at the same time? Let's go over that in this new scene. Our goal will be to make Godo and Godet move to each other, then have Godet jump. Tweens are in chain mode by default. When a tween is in chain mode, you must tell it when to multitask by using the parallel method. Such a task will start at the same time as the previous task. Be careful, because parallel is a method of tweens, not tweeners. Only when all parallel tasks are completed, the tween moves on to the next task, one without a parallel tag. But what if you want to change a lot of things at once, like in this animation? Well, tweens also have a parallel mode you can invoke with, set parallel. When a tween is in parallel mode, it starts its task simultaneously. In this mode, you must convince the tween to wait for its tasks to finish before starting the next one, using the chain method. Now, let's say Godo and Godet are together, and therefore we want this score to shoot up with a little animation. Like how games often do. We can't use a property tweener, because text is not numerical. We also can't use callback tweener, because it makes a single call. We want something in between. Method tweener comes to the rescue. The method tweener takes a callable, like in a callback tweener, but then it also takes a starting value, a final value, and a duration, similar to a property tweener. You can also append a transition and an easing type to it. Note that the first function argument will be the one interpolated. There is actually one other method we can append, and it can be appended to other tweeners too. A delay, using set delay. It's similar to tween interval. The tween will wait a bit before it starts doing the task. So, this is tweens in a nutshell. There are a few functionalities I didn't go over, because they are not useful as often. You can always check out the documentation. Tweens work on any numerical type, from vectors, to colors, and rects, and unlike animation player, you can easily provide them with script variables. Really one of Godot's strongest features. So this about does it. Good luck with your projects.